If you ever get asked to run a dry print, what that means is run a print from the USB without the build plate or the vat. What you're wanting to do is run a print and observe what's going on with the printer. You're going to want to see what's going on with the LCD. This could be a check to see is the LCD functioning properly? Is it working? Now, the reason why you want to run it off the USB and not just run a screen test is because it's not the same data path and it's not going to run the same. On the S3U versus the S4U, it's a very different process on what you have to do to run a dry print. What I'm going to do is run a dry print on both of these and kind of time and see how long it takes between the two. Starting with the Saturn 3 Ultra, this one's a little bit easier because it doesn't have auto leveling or a lot of the auto detection stuff on this one. So for this one, I can just go down and start a print. Uh, what I've got here is a print that's saved locally to the onboard system. You can do that instead of the USB if you've got it, um, but most of the time I'm doing it right off the USB. What this one's going to do is it's just going to go all the way down and then it's going to start printing. It's going to be relatively quick. If this is already down all the way, um, it's going to start printing even faster. Now with the Saturn 3 Ultra running the dry print, what we want to do is take a white piece of paper and put it over the LCD. This is going to do two things for us. One, it's going to protect our eyes so we're not looking directly at that UV light, and it's also going to make it easier to see what's printing. What we're trying to do here is to make sure that what is being shown through the paper is actually what we expect to see. There's no extra lines or glitches or anything like that. The next thing you could do is if you were to take a ruler and set it here, you could actually see how the build arm is moving up and down. You could measure it, and if you time it, you can actually do a little bit of math and determine the speeds, and also make sure the light off delays that you expect to happen are happening, whether that's wait before print, wait after print, or wait after lift. And now that we've covered how to do a dry print on the Saturn 3 Ultra, let's show how that's different on the Saturn 4 Ultra over here. With the Saturn 4 Ultra, it's going to be a little bit different because this printer has to do two checks before it can start the dry print. The first one is to check how much resin's in the vat, and the second check is to do an auto level check. The first thing we have to do is go to the USB and select the print that we want to print, and hit print. Now what it's going to do is go all the way up to the top, because on this printer, the zero is at the top, not at the bottom. Once it goes to the top, it's then going to start going back down and check for level, or check for resin. And again, it's not going to find any resin, so it's going to come up with a thing on the screen that tells me to force the print anyway. And then after that's done, it's going to check to see if the build plate is level. There is no VAT in there, so it can't do that either, and so it's going to pop up and say, hey, force the print anyway. This whole process is going to take about three, almost three minutes to complete. There we go. So right now, basically what it's saying is there's no resin found. So we're going to click is mandatory printing, which is going to overwrite. If you were to hit cancel, you'd have to start all the way over. Now what it's going to do is try to auto leveling. See right there, auto leveling. This is going to take a little bit more time. Once it's done auto leveling, we'll be able to override it again, and then we'll start doing the dry print. All right, you can see it popped up with the mandatory printing. We're going to click that. And now we will start on the dry print. There's one very important setting with this printer you're going to want to know about, and that is the print properties. This is where you can change the speed of the print between high speed and low speed. What you're really changing here is how quickly the vat drops, pretty much increasing the print time. You can set this during a print or in between prints. On a normal printer, you would just set the lift height to basically nothing if you just wanted to test the LCD and you weren't interested in testing things like the lift height or the lift speed or any sort of light off delays. So the dry print that I was running today, its entire purpose is to actually showcase a bug for Elegoo. What that bug does is if there's too many gray values on the LCD from left to right or on the X axis, what it will do is part of the screen will glitch out and start shifting. If you get this bug, what will happen is it will almost look like lasagna where you'll have a bunch of layers that are printed where there shouldn't be and they'll all just be kind of flaky. The way to prevent this bug uh, for now is let's pretend this is your LCD and this is your model. If you're printing it so that it's straight like this, the issue you're going to have is all the gray values are going to be in a line. So instead, if you shift the model like that, or you know, rotate it, what that's going to do is instead of having a bunch of gray pixels, gray value pixels in a row, it's going to put them off on the x-axis. And that should help get rid of the bug. This bug has been around since the Saturn 1, but it doesn't really show up in the wild until the LCD pixel size goes up because it's where the CPU has a hard time processing all the data. This isn't really an Elgoo thing, it's more of the Chichu Box motherboard and how it interacts with the display. But uh, as of right now, I've tested it on pretty much every version of the Saturn, including other Chichu Box based printers. And it shows up in all of them, just for some reason it shows up in the Elgoo a little bit more than the others.
The way that this test is designed to work, as the layers go up, there are more and more white pixels activated, making it more difficult and more likely to glitch. I want you to pay close attention to the letters C and D, and you're going to notice them shifting around quite a bit. For the keen eyes out there, you can also pay attention to the barcode thing, look in the center and see how it shift around, but that's a little bit harder to notice. At the very end, I'm going to do an overlay of all of the layers so you can kind of see how much they're shifting during the print. All right, and that's it for now. This is how to run a dry print. Thanks for watching and have a good day.